The title is how to make better choices is single performance measure from many parameters and I'm going to explain all of these. It might seem a little bit of a cryptic, uh, but um, I'm going to take you through. So uh, this is the structure of the talk. Um, there will be an introduction. It's an introduction to what the problem is about and a little bit of context as well. And then uh, there are already ways people have been doing these things. Um, and that's the next bit, existing metrics. And I'll show you um, what are the issues in there. And then there is the new metrics. So existing one already existed, the new metrics, or well, they were only published this year. So this is very new results that you will be seeing. And then because it's new metrics, I uh, sort of give you some properties just to get a feeling for things. And then I'll show you some uh, results, uh, you know, exploring how things may be different. Uh, uh, that's both using made up data and real data. And then I conclude. OK, so introduction. An introduction is that if you think of um, algorithms, this is just it doesn't have to be algorithm. It could be question could be like you want to, you know, you want to buy a car and then maybe there are five different models, which is the best one or, or anything. But it is in the context of uh, science and engineering, uh, but it could be used in any other thing. But I'll tell you that there are some contexts that's important, and I'll come to that. So basically, you want to know what is best in such circumstances, and so that's why we need a robust assessment of algorithms or object in choosing the best algorithm or object. So in data-driven decision making in any field, um, one needs to ascertain the quality of an algorithm. And of course, to uh, do this using a single performance metric, then it's easy. And I'll take you through how what I'm talking about in case this is not clear. But I will also show you that while it is easy in a case of a one performance matrix, it is difficult in the case of multiple perform multiple metrics. And that's the. So now that we need to specify some context. So what I'm going to talk about, it doesn't uh, this it doesn't help you decide um, everything in life but it does help you decide a large class of uh, things. And so I need to give you the context. One is these performance metrics. So it could be like, you know, you want to buy a car and you might say, well, I want a car that goes from zero to 60 miles per hour in the shortest time. So there, this the, that time is the performance metrics. Or you might say, well, I want the color to be red then that is performance metrics and many other. Of course, I'm not talking about cars in this talk. I'm talking about algorithms, but that's what performance metrics is. So it, the given thing is that every performance metrics is important. And then uh, every performance metric is independent. And uh, that is the do not depend on the other ones that so they are independent. So there and every performance metric is bounded. What I mean by that, that this is a performance metric. So it should have a number, you know, in, in and this number could be a could not be infinite. So it has a range. So it has a, it's a bounded range. But moreover, for this presentation that I'm going to tell you, the, each matrix is normalized such that it is bounded. So they are bounded, but it is also bounded between zero and one. And zero means it's pretty bad, and one means it's, it's the best. 
and we also assume that the these metrics that are proportional metrics are equally important. So any metric is is not as though one is more important than another. Here everything is equally important, and this is for this presentation. Okay. So what's the problem? And I want to show you what the problem is. This is in the case of single metric, there is no problem. In the case of multiple metrics, there is a, a decision to be taken uh, because decision is in one metric. So consider that you have three algorithms, A1, A2, A3, and there is only one metric. Let's call it M1. And then if you look at this, value of these metrics M1 and the three algorithms, you might get 0 0.59, 0 0.59, 0 0.6. These are made up numbers. So there are three algorithms. You get three numbers and we said one is best and zero is worst. And you say, so that means the largest is the best. So here you say, oh, this is the best one because that's bigger than the rest. So and this means that is algorithm three, one, two, three. That means A3 is the best. So it's very easy in the case of single metric, which is the best. And now consider that we have the same three algorithms, but we are using a different metric. It's not M1 anymore. It's not M1, we, let's call it M2. And on that metric, the same three algorithms they measure up 0 0.93, 0 0.91, 0 0.9. And if we look at this, again, it's easy, which is the best, because that's the largest. So you say, oh, that's the best, because these are not as big as this one. So um, in this case, I would say, you would say that, oh, algorithm A1, because that's the first one, A1 is the best. So it's easy in this scenario, in the green scenario with M1, which is the best, which is A3. And blue is easy, A1 is the best. But now imagine that both metrics are important, remember? So we've got two metrics and they're both important. Then which is the best? Because you get A3 from in one case, A1 in the other. And that's where the problem is. And this, this lecture is going to tell you new result as to how to choose the best. So um, we talked about which is the best algorithm if both metrics are important. Now, one might think that this is subjective because, you know, you got um, two different metrics, they give different answers, so, well, it is subjective. But what is surprising, at least it was surprising to me, and it's never been done before, is that under certain context, under certain context or con uh, con um, um, in, 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 uh, that this, which is, seems to be subjective, is actually it's an objective measure. You can actually prove which is the best. And I'll show you. And whatever I'm going to tell you today, you can find out in this paper. So as this paper was published this year, 2023, and it was published in uh, January, so early January. And this is published in IEEE Access. So if you want to know more about what we are going to talk about for the rest of this lecture, you can find a lot more in here. But this is an introduction to where we are going. So existing metrics. So there is something that's been used called arithmetic mean in the sense that so we get in, in our case, we have got two, you know, M1 and M2, remember? So two metrics. So and we're not quite sure, you know, which one. So we just average it. That's the idea that we just average. And so when we average, then the uh, uh, number that we get from this because these are individually zero to one range, the AM would also be between zero to one and zero will be worst and one will be the best. And therefore the algorithm 
with the largest value of AM, so we take M1 plus M2 over 2, that would be considered the best, and people have used it. But it's not the only way to do it, and it's not the only way it's been done. This is one way. And I give you another way, which is called the harmonic mean. Harmonic mean is you take the ratio of 1 over M1 plus 1 over M2 and take the average of that, and then you invert it because M's are in the denominator here. And again, you can show that in the case of that this HM would also be between 0 and 1. It doesn't matter what M1, M2 are, with the, you know, that it will end up being 0 to 1. And again, you know, 0 would be the worst and 1 mean best. So in the two metric scenario, HM is popularly known as the F1 score. And some of you may have either used F1 score or if you do this sort of thing or you have read papers which use F1 score. So this is another way. So harmonic mean, but that, that's not the only one. There is another mean called geometric mean. So you can take and here what you do, you multiply all the all the values. So M1, M, M1 times M2, and then you take the square root in the in the two uh, uh, metric case. And again, uh, you get between zero and one, and same thing, zero means worst and one means best. And so the algorithm which have the, if you're th thinking of only GM, the algorithm that has the largest value of GM will tell according to GM that's the best. So we got three. So F1 is the uh, basically HM in two metric case. We got three. One is AM, another one is HM, and another one GM as I showed you. So which is the best? And we don't really know the answer to this. If you read your literature, you know, uh, journal papers and literature, you find there's no answer to this question. But this paper that I referred to, there is answer to the question. And I show you, I can't prove it because there's not enough time. I'll show you that actually there is answer to this question in the context that I set up. And I'll tell you about that. But this is it. So what I'm saying is that there are these things being used and this is predominantly, this is almost always, almost always, not always, almost. But actually, we don't know why this is the best or why we use it. In fact, it is not the best, actually. Uh, well, in this case it is, but it's not the best. So I thought about the, uh, the paper became a paper because I thought, how can, is it possible that there is a way to think about the question so there is a resolution which is the best? And it turned out that there is. And here are some of the thoughts. And I'm going to tell you about alternative formulation. So first thing to note is not the formulation, but to remind you that these, there, there are indeed, although there is no cost function or, or objective functions, there are intuitive motivations for each of AM, HM and GM. But the reason we can't decide which is the best is because there are, these are not based on any objective functions. You know, normally in science and engineering, we say best because we have some cost function or objective function and we maximize it. But we can't do it. We can't optimize it because there aren't any. So that's the problem. So then I thought, can we make an objective function? And here's the thinking. So in single metric case, as I said, and I'm sure you agree, it's easy. In single metric case, because it's between zero and one, so it represents the value, represents a segment of a straight line between zero and one. So the largest value of this metric, of the single metric, can be formulated as the maximum distance from the origin, because origin is zero. And, zero, so, and that's what gives rise to something called distance from the origin that I called 
This is the new one that's in the paper, DO. And another way of looking at this is not so much distance from the origin. Now, one is the best. So that's the ideal value, one. So we can say whichever is the nearest to the ideal value, that's the best. And that's why this alternative formulation is that being best is the minimum distance from the ideal value. And that's what give rise to another objective function or measure called DIP, distance from ideal position. And I'll show you that in a minute. So what are those two? So first, the last slide, what it shows is that we have reconstructed our alternative formulations in a single dimension. But because we are talking about distance now, we can easily extend to any dimension, any multi-dimension. So it was easy in single metric case to decide what's best. Now we can easily extend these formulation, DO and DIP into multiple dimension. And so we can do it for multi, multiple metrics. And then we can easily develop objective functions as I'll show you. So that's the way to think about it. And that's the way we did. So in terms of distance from the origin, because they all start from zero, so it's the numerator gives you the distance from the origin. This is the Euclidean distance, if you like. And the reason is there is remember, we want uh, one to be the best. If we didn't have one, the distance from zero to one in one dimension is one, but in two dimension is root two. So we don't want root two. That's why it's divided by root n. So this root n is just a normalizing thing, just to make sure the value of do is between zero and one, and zero means worst, and one means the best. So this is only to normalize it. So this is a new one. And it turned out that this happens to be another mean called quadratic mean in the literature. So this is, so if you look, AM, HM, GM, this is one of the same kind, except it's a quadratic mean, QM. Okay, now let's look at the other one. And the other one, this is this one minus, forget the one minus for now. We are taking distance from the ideal position, so that's why it's one minus that. So this is the Euclidean distance from the ideal position, just the numerator here. But we divide by root n for the same reason. We take out the effect of the dimensions. So in two, three, four, we need to divide by bigger number. And then, so that's very much like the other one. And then we have to make sure that zero means the worst and one means the best. And that's why we need the one minus here. So this one minus and dividing by root n, they are to make them all looking like the same. That's all. Uh, the main thing, this is the main thing, this numerator. The others to make sure they look the same. And so we now have two new algorithms, DO and DIP. So DO is, as I said, also known as quadratic mean. But DIP, has not been labeled as any kind of mean. In fact, it is not a mean of any kind. It is of a different kind. So DIP is very different from the other four. But again, so there are two new things now. And one can ask between DO and DIP, which is the best? Of course, they didn't exist in literature before. So I can't say there was no answer. There was no answer because nobody looked at these. But actually, we can uh, uh, answer this question, and it has been answered in the paper that I uh, um, referred to, you know, earlier. So you can uh, read it if you are interested further. But in here, I will give you the answer. So before I give any results. I want to um, 
outline some properties that are um, I consider most important. There are, of course, many more than I'm going to show you. I can only show you a limited number because of time and so on. And also it is to motivate you to, as well as to communicate the ideas, uh, hopefully you'll be motivated to look at these in more detail. So properties. So uh, there's something uh, the same about all these five measures. So these existed, AM, GM, HM. These two, DO and DIP, they're new. So I'm looking at five measures. And, and then these are all of them. All five are bounded between zero and one. And in each case, meaning for AM, zero means worse and one means ideal and that repeats itself for gm hm do and dip so that's this thing here is the same for all five measures there's something else the same that if in a if these metric values m1 m2 and m3 m4 and mn if they're all equal and let's say they're equal to m then these five performance measure will have identical value and that value would actually be M. So that's another thing, despite each of them being different to each other, meaning performance measure, in this scenario, they give identical results. So there is something, you know, that they are, they're, they're neatly uh, kind of organized or invented that they do give same answer which you would hope to get. But now the third question is amongst AM, GM, HM, DO and DIP, which is the best? And there was no answer, but I'm going to tell you what's the best. Um, but again, more details are in the paper. So I want to give you a couple of notions that these, these are not um, exactly proof of something, but kind of they're new, more nuance. Um, so one, this notion, the one in blue, notion one, that's not my notion. Uh, it's not to say I disagree with it. I'm just saying it existed in the literature and I kind of copied it. And this is this was done in the context of F1 measure, which is the HM in two dimension, harmonic mean in two dimension. And it's basically, it motivated uh, uh, HM. Uh, I don't want to go into details here. In a way compared to AM or GM is that when comparing different measures, so in this case, uh, AM, GM and HM, a smaller value of a measure indicates a better measure. Now, that's not my statement. Uh, I basically, you know, look through the literature and this is the way the motivation was because AM and GM existed before. HM came along maybe around 30 years ago, uh, between 30 and 40 years ago, and is used a lot. And that about the only kind of rationale for using HM or F1 measure. But we need to think uh, another, and this is my notion, is that remember, in the case of a, um, okay, so in the case of a single metric, we're looking for the largest value. And the largest value could also be looked at as a distance Remember, either uh, largest distance from the origin or the smallest distance from ideal position in a single measure. And that was distance. I want to emphasize here on distance. And that word distance made sense because we are in one dimension and you're looking to see how far away you're from the ideal position or how far away you're from the, the origin. So distance made sense. But 
when you have multiple metrics, a two metrics, then it's not a distance anymore. It's a two dimension. So, well, it's not that it's not distance. Then from ideal position, what you should be looking at is the least remaining phase space in two dimension. And if it's three dimension, it would be the, uh, this phase space in two dimension is an area. In three dimension, it will be a volume. And in four dimension, it will be hyper volume. So it's not exactly the distance. It's really we should be looking at the remaining phase space. That's 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 the uh, uh, notion that we need to have. So I created this, and it's clearly set out in the paper. So I'm going to show you some pictures now. Uh, we're still in properties, but I want to show you some pictures. So. I hope on my screen the picture doesn't look too great. I hope it's not too bad for you. I don't know. So this is a picture. So what is this picture? So remember, all the pictures are going to be in two dimensions because then it's easy to see, which means two metric cases. Of course, they could be generalized to multi-dimension. Uh, um, so, but let's stay with two dimension because it's easy to then portray these pictures clearly. So this is one metric. And remember, it goes from zero to one. Zero is the origin and one is here. And the other metric is remember they are independent. So it will be a vertical line because there is no overlap between them. So then this is also zero to one origin and one. Now what happens is the Best ideal position is when the two metrics we are measuring by two metrics, this one and this one. Ideal would be if an algorithm gives some value here. That's the ideal position because this is best here and best on this one, which is end up with here. So that's the ideal position. But what happens is that is that's the ideal position, but we are not. You know, in real life, we are not in ideal position. So what we want to do is to figure out how far away we are from the ideal position. So distance is one measure, and that could be done. And the other measure is the phase space. And I'll bring out the remaining phase space. So in principle, depending on the pair of values X and Y, you know, so if we have, say, a measure here, then there's a vast space left that it can't, it's away from it. If you measure here, then there's a very little space ahead. So then there's less, so that is better than being here. So that's the uh, very broad way of looking at it. But I'm going to go through this curve and, and there are a few curves, at least two of them, the same, same basically similar. So uh, I don't need to explain the second one very much. So what's done is there are one, two, three, four, five, five curves. And these five curves for each of the five measures. So here is the AM in black, which is this one. And so different colors mean different measure. So remember that different five colors for five different measures. And then I'm going to focus on just one color. Uh, what are you doing? So what is doing is that, remember I said that if the X and Y values, I two measures value same, then all of them agree. They have the same value, all of them, all five of them. So in this case, when they agree X and Y value the same, that means it's the major diagonal is here. From starting here, it goes along there. So that means along the major diagonal, each of these point, there are infinitely many points on the major diagonal. Each of these point have the same on every point. These two values are the same. This point is not same as that one, but each point X and Y values are the same. And because they are the same, all these five agree on what the measure value is. And that's why there are five curves. So this is the point on the major diagonal. And that's why all five curves at this point, they actually agree. 
you know, they have the same value. That's why performance value is the same. But what happens as you go away from it? So this value, let's call it F, which in this case, this set of thing is actually 0.72. That's an arbitrary number, not completely arbitrary, but I just chose it and it'll be clear why uh, a bit later, but it is an arbitrary number. And so at this point is 0.72. And then what's done for the black curve, which is here, the arithmetic mean, is that we're going away. So at this point, X and Y value are the same. But as we're going away, X and Y value are different. But along this line, the black line, although X and Y value, X values and Y values are different, but their arithmetic mean is the same and same as 0.72. Similarly, this one, this red one, the red one is the distance from the origin. That's one of the new measures. And at this point, the DO value is 0.72. But as you go away, X and Y values are different, but every point on the red curve has the same F value, DO value, 0.72. And, and same thing for the other ones, but I just want to focus on the black and the red. So that means what he's saying is that these, on the red curve, the value is 0.72. And you see how much space is left. So it's between the red curve and, and this, this here. That's the space left. If you take the black one, the arithmetic mean, every point on that line has the same F value, 0.72. So according to arithmetic mean, 0.72 is here. And see how much space you got left. And what you see is the amount of space left, area left, beyond the black line to the uh, to looking to the ideal is a lot less than from the red curve to this point. So the smaller area is the black line and smaller area means you are kind of nearer. It's like the distance, but here is the area. So so that means if whichever of these curves for the same F value got the least remaining phase space area is the best. And you can see by I that the green has the least of all of these five. And red has the most. So the best is the green in this case, because there is a, there's a caveat. So you, you must remember in this case, green is the best and red is the worst measure. And the Green is the DIP, one of the new ones, and red is the DO, one of the other ones, one of the new ones as well, you know, the other new one. So in fact, what we have come up with, with the two uh, um, an alternative formulations, you have come up with the worst one and the best one in this case. Okay, so I'll carry on, as I said, I'll uh, uh, give you time to answer, ask me questions if you have any. So that was for F.72. So, so that means, sorry, I just want to go up. So uh, that means, you know, since one is the best, so this is at the high performance end, you know, 0.72. But also we can look over here and where is 0.35. And this is kind of lower performance end, if you like. And what's happening here is, remember, red was the worst because it had more area and it's still the worst. Red is the worst. But green was the best. It's not the best anymore. In fact, the blue in this case, meaning this case, blue is the best. And blue is the harmonic mean. Right. So, it looks like depending on the value of F, depending on as you move along this diagonal, looks like these the, the relative 
the positions of these pick uh, of these graphs they change and and that's true but it's not random i'll show you the theoretical results but the details are in the paper it's actually very clear uh, and the it's not confusing at all you know the 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 what the result is so as you go along so at lower performance end this is of course it's only one value but let me tell you at lower performance end the blue one is the best hm if you are looking for the best algorithm, you don't want to be in lower performance and you want to be here, high performance end. And if you go to high performance end, then green is the best. Okay. So there are some details here, and what is saying these are some um, exact values, you know, and we are doing it. Uh, these things are these are the different measures the five measures and these are different the uh, kind of things where you can uh, uh, characterize them these are some properties and what it says is that do is um is this is to do with curvature am and i just want that black one this is a straight line this, this black one is always a straight line. You go from here to here, wherever you are here or here or here, it's always a straight line. And because it's straight line, there is no curvature. This one got a curvature, which is pointing this way, you know, this way. And these three, they got curvature and they're pointing that way. Yeah. So remember, so these three have similar curvature, not same in 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 uh, magnitude but same in sign and the red one has opposite and the black one arithmetic mean has no curvature and so if you look at arithmetic mean these are kind of some measure of curvature is is always zero whatever the value is and remember before we said depending on f value things are different here f is already in the equation so this is the general idea so if you choose f.72, you get the number. If you took 0.35, you get different numbers. So here is general, uh, but with picture, so I showed you the specific two web values. So what you find with DO, the curvature is this much, but when you look at the sign of it, it here is negative. When you look at the sign of these ones, they're all positive. And so positive one is, Another way of describing is concave upward, and this one concave downward. So they have similar behavior in terms of curvature, but this one is completely opposite. And AM is right in the middle. That is, it's got no curvature. So this is negative curvature, if you like, and this is positive curvature, and this is no curvature, it's flat. Okay. So what's being done here is that um, the different F values, and remember the first cur um, curve I showed you 0.72, so it starts from 0.72 here. This is 0 0.7, 0 0.72, and goes up all the way to one. And what is plotting here for each of these F values, remember that that particular figure you saw is only for one F value at 0.72. But now what is being done, we're looking at all a values from all meaning from 0.72 up to one. And you're seeing what is the remaining phase space. And you can see that was for in one case in the picture curve. And now you're seeing as long as a value is high here, red has always the more uh, remaining phase space and you want the list because you want to be nearer list very near the ideal and green is the best because this has the least remaining phase space and all the other ones are in the middle meaning between red and green and that's going from 0.72 to 1 but we also showed you the second uh, uh, graph 
And that was if value was 0.35, I think, based on the low end, basically. So we extend this picture to a bigger range, basically from 0 to 1 in the next. Oh, sorry. Uh, before we do that, I want to ask, show you something else. You see, what's happening is here, you look, they're all different here. You know, at 0 0.72, these five are different. And as you're going this way, they're getting nearer. This dispersion between green and red getting narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower, and they look like they're so together. You know, obviously at this point, it's just one, and they're, they're getting narrow. And so to depict that, what I'm doing is I'm keeping the green as the reference, and I dividing all the, the red curve here by the green curve, and then black curve here by the green curve, and blue curve here by the green curve. So in the next plot, you see only four graphs, four uh, curves, which will be these four colors, and there will be no green, because green is the reference. We're dividing all of these by the green curve. And this is what you see. And you can see that this is always Uh, actually coming down and these are going up and they're meeting here. One thing I want to say that these ratios are always bigger than one. This is one. And this is about 1.56. Uh, this is 1.6. So you can see that this is 0.72 by the way here, that the all of these are bigger than green because they're bigger than one but they are converging. So very interestingly, they don't converge. Uh, uh, obviously, ultimately they do, but, but except at the very end, the green one is, th these ones are always bigger than green, except right at the end, of course it's the same. So, so this is all 0 0.7221 to one. and here, before you saw this curve, from about there to there. You know, you didn't see any of this. But now what we have done is it's going from zero to one. So that's the whole range of the ebb values. And what you find is that when you are at lower end, remember it's the lower one that matters, smallest value. When you are at the lower end here, then this, the, this blue one is the best, which is the HM. So somewhere here, you know, HM is better. But after that is the green one is better. So, so the summary would be on this score is that at the high performance end, and I define a high meaning this end, green is the best measure. And at the lower performance end is the HM is the better one. And this red one, is always the worst. So the question of AM, GM, and HM, which is the best? HM is the best. You know, that, that there is no disagreement. Doesn't matter where you are on this, whether you're here or here, HM is better than AM and GM. The other question was DO and DIP, which is the best? DIP is the best. And it doesn't matter whether you're here, here, anywhere. It, the thing, so that means the two possible best over the whole range is either HM or DIP. If you're a high performance end, and if you're looking for best algorithm, you'll be somewhere here, then DIP is the best. If you're at the lower performance end, then HM is the best. And that's the full answer, if you like. So now I'm going to show you some uh, examples from data. Uh, so to do this, um, what I've done, I've done a couple of tables. They are made up. You know, I just created the numbers to show you the, the uh, you know, who I'm talking about to motivate you. And then there are a couple of tables using real data. 
um, so first one is this. So in this case, uh, we talked about this. You know, you got one metric here. These are the three algorithm, A1, A2, A3. And these are two metrics. And as I said, first toy example. And you get these numbers. So according to this then metric, this is the best. And you get these numbers. And according to this metric, this is the best. And the question was, which is the best if we use both, if they're both important? And you look at the aim value using these, and you get this set. And according to AM, this is the best because that's bigger than these two. Then you get to GM, and GM says, uh, oh, we have these ones. And again, you see, this is the biggest. So that's the best. According to GM, that's the best. Uh, but, but note that these numbers, they don't match, but that doesn't matter. They don't match because they're different things. So that's not surprising. So HM, again, that's the best because that's bigger than these two. And DO is this one is the best. They're bigger than these two. And DIP, this is, this is not the best because the largest one is here. So this is a scenario I created to show that for a given set of a pair of values like this, you can get different results. And in this case, DIP saying that's the best, meaning A3, while all these four saying uh, um, that A1 is best. But remember, there is a reason, there is an objective function for this being the right one, because we defined what the problem is, and that's the right answer. This is another toy example. So I made up the numbers. And you got, again, you got three algorithms and you got two metrics, two measures, uh, sorry, two metrics. And according to this, you look at these and you say, oh, that's the best. So A3 is the best. And you to look at M2 here, that's the best. So we got A1 best and A3 best. So if we use both, which is the best? AM tell you that one is the best because that's bigger than these two. GM tell you that's the best because that's bigger than these two. HM can't decide which is the best. According to HM, they're all the same. So this is different from the last table. In last table, these, these four, they agreed which is the best. This is one where HM doesn't agree with the others. Uh, DO, this is the best. So this A3 is the best according to AM, GM, and DO. The HM thinks they're all equally good. But when you go to deep DIP, he says, oh, that's the best because that's bigger than these two. So again, this result uh, contradicts uh, DO, GM, AM and contradicts HM, and not because these two don't agree, but because HM thought they're all equally good, but DIP is saying, no, they're not equally good. This is best, and these two are nearly as good, but not as good. So again, you get different result using DIP, and we got a cost function, and it's clear what is the right answer. So I won't go through explaining all this, but I thought it would be good to have a look at uh, the uh, uh, some real data that's been published. So they're not my data, by the way. I just got it. This is an area I work in, this medical image segmentation. It's one of my research areas. So I looked at uh, so the, the, these things I know about. And I, I don't expect you to read this or anything, but it's there just to make sure. So the data, this is a, a publicly available data set. Um, is here. In fact, it's, it's International Skin Imaging Collaboration. That's the ISIC 2017 data set. And this is the um, uh, reference. And then inside, uh, I next uh, couple of, I'll show you some tables, and these are the reference of where the results came from. So the results I'm giving you, they're not mine, uh, they're theirs, but I'm um, using, of course, all the DO, DIP, and so on. They, they're obviously not published. They're my results. So that's it. That's where it comes from. 
So they're not my data, other people. So these are different algorithms. I won't explain what they are, but they, they involve, you know, AI, uh, artificial intelligence and other things. And they're talking about image segmentation and they're using two metrics and they are called uh, sensitivity and specificity. They're independent of each other and we have five measures and they're the five measures. So I work out, so given these two, I work out all of these. And so again, with AM, if we look down, this is the best result. And uh, this is the best. And GM, that's the best. HM, that's the best. DO, that's the best. So according to these four, this algorithm is the best. These ones, solid black ones. But when you look at DIP, the largest one is here. And according to DIP, that's the best. So here, you know, if one made a decision here in the published paper, that's the best algorithm. It's not the best algorithm. This is the best algorithm. So we made a, uh, that, that is a mistake in earlier, uh, in the final decision. Okay, so this is two, you know, two metrics. So we are in a, a plane, Euclidean plane. And just for, just because we can extend to three dimension as well, I thought it'd be interesting to put the three dimension one. So here we have three metrics, accuracy uh, as well as we have before we have these two, now we have the accuracy as well. So we have three metrics and same five measures. And these are the same algorithms here. But what we are doing here is not only we have done something like this, we, we ordered them, which is the best and which is the worst and things in between. And so here, according to AM, that well, the top one is the best and the bottom one is the worst. So according to AM, this is best and this is worst. And according to GM, this is best and this is worst and so on. And then you can see these green things. What are these green things? The green things where they agree where these AM results agree with what the uh, uh, result is and, uh, uh, you know, what it should be. And in, in AM case, there are six possibilities, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, six algorithms. It's only one position, it got it right, that's the worst. So they they all agree, all of five agree, which is the worst algorithm. But, only one agreed, which is the best, and that's DIP. But these two, one best and the other one isn't. So FPN is here and the unit. But so this green thing saying, in the case of AM, one out of six position is correct. That's this one. In this case, GM, two out of six positions is correct, these two. In HM, you get four out of six, one, two, three, four, the green ones. Correct. In DO, you only get one correct. But when DIP, that's the best ones I said in high performance, you all get six out of six correct. So this is scoring much better than any of these. So now the concluding remarks. And so first thing to say that uh, the, this work addressed a much required knowledge gap in objective evaluations of performance measures. And, and it, it can be used in many different fields. It, it's not just one field of engineering or another field of science or anything, there are many, many places. And this introduced the, the two uh, objective measures, which gave you uh, these two, uh, a new, uh, performance measure, and this is it. HM is always true that HM is better than GM, which is better than AM, and which is better than DO. So, and it's always true uh, that DIP is better than AM, which is better than DO. But there's an interplay between DIP and HM that's here. Of these five measures, either DIP or HM is better than the rest. Always. And DIP turns out to be the best among the five measures examined in the high performance end. So if you're working in the high performance end, 
then it's the DIP that you should be trusting. Okay, so I stop here.